Welcome to a ChessMapper tutorial video. This video introduces new functionalities of ChessMapper 2.0. First we will show how to map an Explorer dataset into a 3D space based on structural fragments. Then we will use ChessMapper to analyze the structure activity relationship in the dataset. And finally, we will do visual validation of a QSA modeling approach. We require a dataset with a measured activity, and we select a subset of the CPDB All Species dataset. The subset contains 86 compounds that have a measured hamster carcinogenicity endpoint. And um, from the provided Excel file, remove all columns apart from smiles, compound ID, and of course the activity and remove all compounds that have no endpoint information. We have saved this file to a simple comma-separated file, and this file can now be opened with ChessMapper. So we load it into the software. And as we only have uh, smile strings, we compute 3D structures with OpenBabel. As already mentioned, we would like to use structural features for the embedding. In more detail, we will use three free predefined smart lists that are used in OpenBabel to compute fingerprints. And uh, when matching these three smart lists, we get, a, we get at first 122 structural features. However, the min frequency in ChessMapper is uh, per default set to 10, but this is maybe a bit too high and we reduce it to only one. And this results in 260 structural fragments that match at least one compound. We skip clustering and we use salmon embedding to compute the 3D positions for compounds. As dissimilarity measure, we employ um, Tanimoto similarity, which is uh, suitable for structural fragments. We uh, skip the 3D alignment and you know, press Start Mapping. When the mapping is completed, a warning about the embedding quality appears, but we will uh, come to that later and have a look at the dataset first. The 3D viewer shows it in the center of the screen and you can rotate, it the, com rotate the compounds and zoom in on single compounds. On the right-hand side is an overview of the dataset, and it includes the features that are stored in the dataset, like the activity. And moreover, the 260 structural fragments are listed here. And smart fragments can be quite complicated to read, and therefore there's a description or name for each fragment in the smart files, and this description is shown here in the list. And the simple smarts fragment at the bottom encodes if the compound includes a ring structure. And there are 50 compounds in the dataset that include rings, and these are highlighted in red. And the actual matching smarts fragment is shown in yellow. We now select a different fragment that is matched by different compounds, of course, and enable a new highlighting mode that preserves the, the atom coloring by type. The ordering of the features on the right is automatically sorted when a compound is selected. And features that are very specific for this compound and separate this compound from the remaining dataset are at the top of the list. For example, the selected compound is the only compound that matches this frag smarts fragment that we just selected. <coughs> and we select another fragment and can see that the compound is only one of as one of three compounds that match this fragment. And the automatic sorting functionality is not only available for a single selected compound, but also for clusters of clustering would have been enabled, and for arbitrary groups of compounds. 
And the user might, for example, wonder what does this compound, compound has in common with these two neighboring compounds. And these three compounds match the first fragment in the list, and um, this fragment is actually only matched by 11 compounds in the data set, so it's very specific for these, for these three compounds. And as all structural fragments have been used for embedding, compounds with high tiny motor similarity are close to each other in 3D space. But the dimensional reduction is not always feasible without loss of information. So Jasmine tells you how well the 3D positions reflect the tiny motor similarity by computing the concordance correlation coefficient between feature distance metrics and 3D positions distance metrics. And it computes the embedding stress for single compounds, and that is now highlighted. And for compounds with low embedding stress, the 3D, dist 3D distances resembles the Tanimoto distance quite well, but this is not the case for compounds with high embedding stress. And this compound here has the highest embedding stress, it has chloride ion attached as well. And um, to overcome the limitation of, uh, of the embedding stress, JazzMapper can compute the distance to a particular compound and this helps you to find the neighbors for a compound. And here we can select the uh, three nearest neighbors to this compound. And we can and again we can use the sorted feature list to find out what these compounds have in common. We will now analyze the structure activity relationship in a data set and therefore we will select the activity and this will highlight active and inactive compounds. And even though this information was not used for embedding, uh, still the uh, active and inactive compounds are quite well separated. And this is because the activity depends on the structural information which was used for the embedding. And what we are looking at is also often referred to as the activity landscape of a dataset. And when analyzing activity landscapes, people are often interested in activity cliffs. And these are compounds uh, that have um, that are similar in structure but differ in their endpoint value. And normally, activity cliffs are computed for numeric endpoints, but um, they can also be applied. This concept can also be applied to binary class values. And activity cliffs can be determined visually with JazzMapper, but there's also a functionality to compute activity cliffs. And this is done by calculating the mean structure activity landscape index. And um, <coughs> this is a pairwise value, and it is JazzMapper converted um, by using the mean. And then you can select the compounds that have the highest uh, activity cliff values. And again, we can compute the distance to this compound that we have selected and select the nearest neighbors to this compound. Now we can again have a look at common properties or we can use the filter functionality that is included in ChessMapper as well. And when we now highlight the activity, we can see as expected that these compounds are very similar but um, have a different class value. We will now visually validate a QSAR modeling approach, and visual validation is the graphical inspection of QSAR model prediction and QSAR validation results. And therefore, we have applied a random forest model to this dataset um, that has used the exact same features as input that uh, we have used for embedding. And during validation, the compounds of the dataset are predicted by the model. And this adds two new features to our dataset the prediction and the misclassifications. 
and we have a select we have selected a 10 times repeated tenfold cross validation for validation and consequently each compound in the data set was predicted 10 times and this is why the value of the um, prediction feature is uh, is the ratio of how often the compound was classified as active a value of one for example is assigned to compounds that are always predicted as active 10 times and uh, compounds with value zero are always classified as inactive and these are the compounds where the model is especially answered we can also highlight misclassifications and can easily inspect compounds that are often misclassified and could further proceed to inspect if these misclassified compounds have common feature values. <clears throat> In order to inspect if the misclassifications are false positives or false negatives, JazzMapper allows to highlight two features at once. And to this end, we first select the predicted value, then the activity, and then we enable double sphere highlighting. And now the inner sphere indicates the activity, this compound is inactive, and the outer flat sphere indicates the prediction which was always active for this compound. And the user can now go on and inspect single misclassified compounds or groups of misclassified compounds. And therefore, visual validation with JazzMapper can help to detect possible mismeasurements when testing compounds, and it can help to analyze the QSA modeling approach. Thanks for watching.